lesson or this video will go over the mini lesson, the learning target. If you have not yet finished your RTL and you're watching this um, as a pre recorded video, you didn't attend live class, make sure you go back and complete your RTL. If you're someone who's currently in live class and you want to get full participation points for the day, please make sure that you recorded your response to whatever question I asked in the chat. Let's get started. So today, remember, we're going back into new content. We're going back into our American government unit as of yesterday. You guys did a fantastic job with review. We are now solid on the different forms of government, on the forms of government. You guys have learned about different types of government, democracy, oligarchy, dictatorship. But now we really need to get into that part of our unit where we learn about our government, how our democracy works. So here we go. I will be able to explain whether each of the rights in the Bill of Rights is inalienable or unnecessary. So let's break down some of these terms. First, today we're talking about something really important called the Bill of Rights. We can break this term Bill of Rights down into even smaller parts. First, you see this word bill. Usually, when we think of bill, we think of something we have to pay. But in this case, Bill of Rights has nothing to do with money. A bill, if it's got a capital B, it's usually some type of formal list. So the Bill of Rights is literally a list of rights. Your most important rights in this country are listed under the Bill of Rights. It's 10 of your most important rights. These rights are written in a document that countries use to organize their country, to organize their government when they first gain independence. You guys created this same document back during regular school. It's called, pause the video if you want to see to get it on your own, but it's caused, called a constitution. So the Bill of Rights is located in the constitution. It is like what we said, it is a list of rights. Your job today, now let's go big picture to the learning target. Your job today is to be able to explain whether each of the rights, remember there are 10 of them, whether each right in the Bill of Rights is inalienable or unnecessary. Unnecessary is probably a familiar term for us. We probably know that unnecessary simply means not needed. The other term that's new for us though, is this word inalienable. Inalienable just means absolutely necessary. It just means absolutely necessary. It's the opposite of unnecessary. Inalienable means absolutely necessary. It means that something can never be taken away. So there are 10 rights in the Bill of Rights. Your job is to figure out whether each right is inalienable, whether each right is absolutely necessary, we should never take it away, it doesn't matter what the situation is. Is each right in the Bill of Rights inalienable? or is it unnecessary? Is it not really needed? You're going to figure out the different rights in the Bill of Rights, as well as whether each right is inalienable or unnecessary through an activity today. Before we jump into explaining how to do the activity though, I've got a quick video I wanna show you that gives you a visual of the different rights in the Bill of Rights. You do not need to take notes in this video because as you will see when we get to the activity, you already have all the notes you need 
for the Bill of Rights. It comes on one of those handouts that you would normally glue in to your interactive notebook. So now let's get to the video. The first 10 amendments to the U.S. Constitution, also known as the Bill of Rights, were ratified or passed over 200 years ago. But even though they're a bit, well, old, these first 10 amendments are still the most debated and discussed section of our Constitution today. So can you remember what they are? Let's take a look. The First Amendment is the freedom of speech, press, religion, assembly, and petition. This may be the most revered of the amendments. The First Amendment protects our rights to say and write our opinions, worship how we please, assemble together peacefully, and petition our government if we feel the need. The Second Amendment is the right to bear arms. The original intent of the Second Amendment was to protect colonists from the invading British soldiers, but it now guarantees that you have the right to own a gun to defend yourself and your property. The Third Amendment is called the Quartering Amendment. It was written in response to the British occupation and as a result the colonists having to house or quarter soldiers in their homes during the American Revolution. Because of this amendment, our government can never force us to house soldiers in our home. The Fourth Amendment is the right to search and seizure. The police can't come into our home without a search warrant and take our personal property. Today, many concerns have arisen about our rights to privacy and technology. For example, can the government track your location with your smartphone, or can social media postings such as on Facebook and Twitter be used without a warrant? On to the fifth. It's all about due process. You've probably heard the phrase, I plead the fifth, in movies or on TV. They're talking about the Fifth Amendment, which says that you don't have to take the witness stand against yourself if you may end up incriminating yourself. Okay, we're halfway done. The Sixth and Seventh Amendments are about how the legal system works. If you're accused of a crime, you have the right to a speedy public trial and an impartial jury. You also have the right to a lawyer and the right to take the stand if you choose. This is important because it will prevent the accused from sitting in prison forever and insist that the prosecution proceed with undue delay. The seventh says you have the right to a jury trial where 12 impartial peers decide your innocence or guilt in the courtroom as opposed to a judge doing it all alone. The Eighth Amendment prohibits cruel and unusual punishment is a death penalty cruel? Is it unusual? It's hard for Americans to agree on the definitions of cruel and unusual. The Ninth and Tenth Amendments are called the Non-Rights Amendments. They say that the rights not listed in the Bill of Rights are retained by the people in the states. You have other rights that are not listed in the Constitution, and the states have the right to make their own policies, like instituting state taxes. So, now you know all ten amendments. Can you remember them all? If not, remember this. The Bill of Rights are a crucial piece of American history, and though society has undergone many changes these past 200 and some years, the interpretation and application of these amendments are as vital today as they were when they were written. So the good news is, guys, you do not need to remember all of the rights in the Bill of Rights because they're all listed for you right here on your Bill of Rights worksheet. We're only gonna worry about the first eight. Don't worry about nine and 10 for now. We'll get to those later in our unit. For today, we're just concerned with the first eight. You have all the information you need on this page, the Bill of Rights Worksheet page. Using this information, you need to complete your inalienable or unnecessary right graphic organizer. Directions, they're highlighted. Using the information from your Bill of Rights worksheet on the previous page, that's this guy, complete the seven of the following 10 scenarios. So you're, you've got three columns here. You've got your scenario, which I provided for you. In the center column, it asks you for the amendment, which amendment matches this scenario, just write the number. And in the third column, you've got your explanation where you have to explain your answer to this question. Is the right or rights guaranteed by this amendment inalienable or unnecessary? 
in your first row, which I have highlighted, I've given an example of how you complete this graphic organizer. Here's the scenario. A protester is arrested at an environmentalist rally, which amendment gives her the right to protest peacefully. If I go back up to my Bill of Rights worksheet page and I start reading through the amendments, I'll find quickly that the First Amendment protects your right to gather in groups to protest. So I know that amendment number one, number one in the Bill of Rights gives this woman in the picture the right to protest. All I have to do in that center column is write the number, is write the number of the right. In that third column, my explanation, what I'm explaining is whether this amendment, the right to protest, I'm explaining whether this amendment is inalienable, it can never be taken away under any circumstances, or is the right to protest unnecessary. So in my explanation, I'm not talking about the scenario. I'm talking about the amendment. I'm talking about the right to protest. So in my explanation, I say the right to protest is inalienable in my opinion. The right to protest should never be taken away, no matter the circumstance. Having the right to protest is especially important in a democracy. In a democracy, citizens must be able to express their opinions at all times. If citizens are not able to express their opinions, Leaders will not create laws which reflect the citizens' wants and needs. It is very important in this explanation section that you are explaining whether the amendment, whether the right is inalienable or unnecessary. You should not simply be talking about the scenario in that explanation column. So you've got 10 scenarios. Pick seven that look the most interesting to you. Like if you're interested in the death penalty, I might go to this guy with the map. If you're interested in school shootings, I might go to this guy. If the flag burning a picture looks interesting to you, you can just start with the second box. Pick seven of these 10 and complete your inalienable or unnecessary right graphic organizer for those scenarios.